Scentland, the land of scent. Hello and welcome, Chris, back with yet another fragrance review. And this time we are looking at a fragrance and brand that I've been looking already before. Um, I've reviewed this fragrance before, but I was not satisfied with the outcome. Both the designer and the fragrance itself deserve better. So this is why today I have a second look at da -da -da -da, Santa Stage Open 4. Psycho by Otto Kern. Otto Kern Cycle released in 1991. Another vintage wonder there. Um, 1991, and let me tell you a little bit about Otto Kern himself. Um, because we all know the, the, the great lineup of, of very successful and famous German fashion designers. Um, some of them have you know, uh, passed away, some of them are still with us. Uh, talking about Karl Lagerfeld, Wolfgang Job, Jill Sander, uh, recent um, generation Michael Michalski or even Rudolf Mosama. I mean, these are people that are very well known obviously in Germany and outside as well internationally. And Otto Kern was very, very much one of them. Unfortunately, it was he passed away three years ago in some kind of, kind of weird circumstances there. But let's concentrate on his work, what he has Done in the early 70s, he has established himself as the Hemden König, the Hemden König. In Germany, that means, in German, that means King of Shirts. He released a um, collection of men's shirts onto the market in in 71, and by 1973 he was known national uh, nationwide. Okay, and he kept that uh, title. He was Hemden König forever. Okay very successful uh, designer of, of men's shirts and indeed he ventured into other directions in fashion as well. In 1990 he released the first fragments, uh, woman's fragments called Noir Noir and then 1991 came Cycle. Cycle, I love the name, absolutely. Let's give it a spray from the, ooh, it's like an atomic bomb spray. Have you seen that? And so how does it smell? It smells exactly like the time when it came out. 1991, okay, why am I saying this? This was a very, very adventurous time in, 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 in fragrance history. Um, very exciting things happening at the end of the 80s and first half of the 90s. And this was, and still is, very much part of it, although it has been discontinued, but there's still some bottles around. Uh, you know, if you dig in, you, might, you may find some online. Um, so how does it smell like? It smells, there is a very, very prominent cassis note in there, cassis, which is, um, the leafy part of black currant, and it smells aromatic, green, like almost like it's 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 an it it, it has an ammoniac sort of impact. It smells bitter. It smells. Some refer to this to this scenario to this particular cassis note in a fragrance like cat piss, cat piss. Okay, so it's it's a, it's a kind of vulgar expression, but. It, 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 this, it has this green bitter aromatic twist in it, in, in it. It gives it, lends it this, this twist, which was very much there in the, in the 80s, um, even in the 70s and, um, and some 90s fragrances as well. Um, although the cassis is not, not that often used to that extent like here, I think it, 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 it gives it a tremendously nice aromatic green bitterness. Um, so, Apart from that, we have a great minty freshness. It's, it's mint is subdued here, but it's very much there, a player in the orchestra, okay? You can smell it. Woody notes and green notes. There's a green layer around the fragrance, apart from the cassis as well. It smooths, it smooths it down. So overall, it's a green, aromatic, fresh fragrance, okay? But the most important thing and the most interesting thing is that I'd like to do now is to help you understand better how it smells like because it's so rare uh, and it's and, and usually I don't like to compare fragrances to to the other one smells like this or smells like that that's not that's not my game but in this case I would like to help you in order to be able to understand how this fragrance actually smells like okay so I give you three examples three fragrances actually that this is some sort of a blend or a mixture of. It doesn't smell like one or the other of those three. It smells like a sort of, sort of combination of those three, okay? I'm talking about, let's see a chronological order there. Sport de Paco Rabanne, released by Paco Rabanne, obviously in 1986. Green, sporty, 
aromatic, even fougere fragrance. Uh, very uplifting, love, uplifting, very bright, yet very, um, compared to today's uh, uh, sports fragrance, is still very conservative, okay? But it, it's, it's a very nice, sporty, uh, green, fresh fragrance, uh, Paco Rabanne, sport de Paco Rabanne. And maybe it has actually cassis, I'm not sure, but it surely has a green aromatic um, vibe going on with some mint. Like here, green aromatic with some mint. The mint is not a main player here and it is not a main player in Sport de Pacaraban, but it's very much there and it's very much part of the orchestra, you know, playing. So, so that part of this fragrance remind me of Sport de Pacaraban. And then as we travel in time, uh, we bump into the fantastic masterpiece called Eternity for Man by Calvin Klein, 1989. It has this very classy yet new direction of green, um, smooth, uh, tenderly aromatic kind of direction, okay? Not the greenness, not the oak mossy or piney stuff. No, no, sort of almost um, like a glove, uh, uh, like a green glove, you know, grabbing your heart, really. It's, it, is, it is like that in eternity and some Thing reminds me of that in here as well. So you have parts of that green, uh, smooth, new direction, modern, at the time, we're talking about 1989, 1990, right? Modern type of new direction greenness in here as well. And last but not least, surprisingly, most surprising of them all, is a touch, a gentle but very nice touch of Havana by Aramis being somehow included in here, even though Aramis, Aramis came out later, much later, in 1994. Yet there is an aspect in Otto Kern cycle that reminds me of this, this, this tobacco smoky, kind of tobacco aromatic rather, um, impact um, of Aramis Havana, okay? Although there's no tobacco in here, okay? So I'm not saying again it smells like Havana, no, but it has this this kind of scenario, okay, uh, of Aramis Havana, as well as Calvin Klein Eternity for Man, as well as Porto Baco Rabanne. So you can see what a tremendous three-in-one sort of scenario we have here. This still, still stands very much on its own feet, okay? It's, it's, it's an absolutely stunning masterpiece, I would say. Um, and and um, Otto Kern at the time has, has really concentrated and focused on having something going into the new direction yet still maintaining the classy gentlemanly uh, basic rules of a great gentleman's fragrance which is here the, the green aromatic backbone you know being put into some different direction very very nice performance by a silage uh, projection absolutely stunning um, longevity the whole day if you spray four sprays beneath your shirt and then you go with your body heat it's perfect perfect you get these whiffs of cassis this this bitter green aromatic never sweet never bloody sweet uh, i it's just absolutely stunning this thing and the most most important thing is so versatile you can wear this into winter uh, in the winter it has enough balls to, to to carry you through the winter time yeah in summer evenings it, it's great there as well and obviously spring and autumn, absolutely. So very versatile. Age-wise, well, I would say 35 and above because this really requires a, a sort of a, a, a taste that tends toward the classic, you know, good old vintage fragrances. Although if you are 22 and you, you, you think you have the personality to carry this off, do it, do it, because you will be standing out from the crowd, right? So um, Otto Kern, absolutely fantastic. One important remark is that uh, coming back to Otto Kern itself and the brand that Otto Kern first sold bits of pieces of his company in 93 then in 2000 entirely so the Otto Kern fragrances that you see out there today uh, and there are, there's, there's several lines of Otto Kern fragrances in, in, in available in the German speaking countries and, and some Eastern Europeans as well so those Otto Kern fragrances have nothing to do with Otto Kern anymore so ever since 2000 he's not involved i think this is the only uh, uh male fragrance that he ever has been involved in creating and that so 
So this is genuine auto can. What you see today out on the shelves, it's, it's just a brand uh, using the license of the name, okay? And I think it's made by Moira and Wirtz in Germany still. Um, but this is original, genuine auto can masterpiece, okay? So God bless the man. Um, and as I say, I have four bottles of this. I keep using this throughout the entire year. And apps, I call it one of my signatures, definitely. Um, love it to bits. <clears throat> And um, yeah, that was Chris with another fragrance review. Um, a second look at Cycle by Otto Kern, the great late German Hemdenkönig. Ja, danke schön, auf Wiedersehen.